Braxton. Thank you so much for coming on Turning the Tide. It's a show that uh, is dedicated to restoring the American dream right across the board. And uh, the, the reason I wanted to have you on is because your your book, uh, Protostar, is, is just a wonderful book about um, hope and courage and strength. And so I wanted to have you on. So thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate having you having me on. I mean, this is just great. You know, um, the book has just been such a, a blessing to me. You know, I feel like it was a call in that God just kind of uh, put and laid on me one day and just to actually finish the book, complete the vision and to now just, you know, see so much uh, revelation about the book and what its real emphasis is going forward with core values and and everything. It's just it's just wonderful. And I really appreciate you all having me on to talk about it. Absolutely, Braxton. Now, I was really fascinated how the book came about. Would you mind sharing with us how that happened? Yeah, um, I was actually at church one day. Um, you know, I, I've got bachelor's, master's, and doctorate degree in, in health science and physical therapy, so it was never anything that I thought I might do one day. But I was in church, and uh, the bishop was preaching, and he said that God was telling him that somebody, or uh, not just myself, I believe, that day, I think it was others as well, that he was calling to do something that was uh, going to be very different. He wanted them to do something, but nobody was really asking God what he wanted them to do. Um, and it might be something very different, you know, to be prepared for it. So I said, well, you know, I started praying. I said, okay, Lord, well, you know, maybe you have something for me. And he told me, write a book. And I was kind of floored by the idea, like, well, I've never thought about writing a book, you know. Um, I'm first and foremost a movie goer. I love movies. I love, uh, you know, anything that's creative and new. Um, and that's my thing. And basically, I felt uh, as I started sketching out the plot right there in church that I wanted to write something that was really uh, outlined um, as a movie. I felt as if uh, the writing, the way I wrote the book is very descriptive and the details that I write with, um, I feel like I kind of paint the picture that's in my head. Um, so that's pretty much how the book came around. And, you know, three months later, I'm sitting here with a full manuscript wondering, OK, well, what do I do with it now, you know? And I just remember the whole time I was writing it, uh, I was thinking about all the details. What do I do? You know, who do I get this to? And God just kept saying, just finish the book and, and we'll, you know, we'll deal with that some other time. So I was just, you know, being obedient to doing just finishing it up and, you know, just just amazing how quickly everything went by. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, for I have a lot of authors who are published and those who are not published yet who are at the point where they are submitting to publishers. Would you mind sharing your, your little journey on how you, you came to Firefly? Yeah, what I did is um, I, I first I queried about 17 uh, literary agents trying to, you know, figure out if, if it was even something that they might be interested in. And most everybody got back to me. They were interested, but I think it was just something so different that they really um, didn't get involved with. And what happened is uh, they were, you know, nobody was really insulting me. They just came out and said, hey, you know, uh, it's good, but it's not the way we're going right now. So I was like, that's fine. And um, what I did then is I just, um, there was a person who I knew that wrote a book uh, previously when I first moved to Atlanta. And um, I asked him, I said, well, you know, do you, are you still writing? Do you know of any publishers? And they directed me to Firefly. So I directly submitted to uh, Firefly online. And, um, you know, she, Diane wanted to, read the first five chapters of the manuscript. I submitted that to her. She immediately got back to me. She liked it. She thought it had a lot of uh, growth potential, and she said she wanted to edit it down a little bit um, and get it where it was a lot more concise, kind of cut away the fat, so to speak. So we did that. Um, we took out about another 9,000 words from the manuscript and then got it together and just really, I think, put together the completed uh, project. And um, I, I feel as if it's the best part of, of what, I had originally created. That's generally how it works with a good editor, in all honesty. I, I'm a published author myself, so I understand mm -hmm. where you're coming from right. on that. Yeah. Okay, why don't you tell us about your book? Okay, well, um, Star Cross Saga, a proto star, the first book in the series, it's going to be a planned trilogy at this point, and I kind of see it maybe even going in some spinoffs with some ebooks, just some side stories that kind of carry some of the uh, personal um, tales of the characters that are in the book. But at, at, at its heart, it's just a lo it's really a love story. And I think it just kind of reflects God's love for us, you know, kind of seeking and, and searching to be with us and constantly pulling away at us through all of our circumstances. And that's what really this is. Um, it tells a story of a young girl named Sydney who um, is a star child, basically a, um, an, an offspring of the sun. 
you know, and our star, actually all the stars in the universe are actually considered, you know, suns, but in the solar system, you would call um, our star the sun. And there's a bounty hunter named William Deering who is sent on a mission to actually destroy her because uh, her, the race of beings that he is, uh, they be- the Torian Alliance, they actually believe that um, these star children are a threat to the galaxy because uh, at a certain age, they actually come into fruition of powers that are actually of the sun. And they just don't know what they might do with those powers. So they've been hunting them down over centuries. So he comes to Earth and um, he's on a mission to eliminate her. And then what happens is along the way, he ends up getting delayed um, due to um, his equipment being damaged in his landing on Earth. And what he does is he decides that he's just going to study her for a while um, until his equipment is fixed. And during that time that he's spending with her, he starts to form a connection with her. And at, at this time, he's starting to have this inward kind of fighting amongst his own emotions plus his duty you know he knows he's supposed to do this uh he knows that this is something that he's supposed to complete in order to restore some honor to his family uh and you learn history from from the book is that uh his family had actually failed in doing this once before so he took it upon himself to actually uh go on this mission and do so with his father's blessing so uh, as he continues to stay around there you know lo and behold he starts to get these feelings for him now he has to make a decision uh, somewhere right around the last third of the book has it decided if he's going to actually go through with it or not. And I won't spoil it for you, but, you know, there's a sequel. So uh, you can assume <laughs> uh, what does take place. But uh, just along the way, I, I really wanted to capture dialogue between uh, men and women just in that whole dating. I, you know, I think we've all been in, um, uh, in love now. Uh, of course, I'm married and um, have been in love before with that young love, you know, where you're just around somebody all the time and you're in school and, you know, um, you always think that's going to be the person you'll be with forever. Um, so I wanted to capture that again, kind of like as an ode to my marriage, just to keep things young and fresh. And then also just give uh, young people examples that you can have that non-contact intimacy, which is uh, portrayed in the characters in the book. Uh, because I think it's just so special just to really love to just be around somebody just because you're around them and, and just be in their thoughts and, and just have this dialogue uh, amongst yourselves where you're really just trying to learn everything you can about that person. So. Um, that's where the book is. That's that's kind of where it takes off. And there's a lot of great little spins in there. I think uh, the technology that I use for some of the weapons and the, and the science fiction, uh, so to speak, uh, portion of the book really comes in as my background as a therapist using some of the um, technology that I use as a therapist as well. So I kind of incorporated that in there. Um, and, and there's some just some other side characters that kind of have their own thing going on that I'll continue to um, – detail and outline in the next books as we go forward, kind of giving their their backstories and things like that. So it's not just William and Sydney. I think the story has a lot of dimensions and layers to it. And and, uh, I'm just real pleased with the way everything came together. How many books are in this series? I think it's going to be three. I feel like it's going to be a a, a trilogy. Um, God's already spoken to me already. I've got like tons of other books I want to write as well. So um, at the end of this month is when I'll actually start putting together the book, moving forward with writing it and creating that. At the end of the the first one in Protostar, you do get a sneak peek of the first chapter of the next book, which is called Supernova. And um, I'm just building on that. Uh, It's going to be a little bit darker. I have a little bit more of a focus on on, uh, some of the background and the the history behind everything. Uh, There'll be some flashbacks to William's home planet to see what's going on with the civil unrest there. And of course, there are you know, their love story continues to blossom. And as love stories do, they kind of have their peaks in their valleys. So it's going to be interesting to see how they just continue to like, okay, we're here now. We, you know, we, we see how this is going to be now. Where do we go with it? Oh, that sounds really interesting. You know, I didn't get to finish your book. My nephew took it. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming I get to finish it when he brings it back to me. That's right. That's right. <laughs> He's loving it. Anyway, okay, so it's a tr- you've got a trilogy that's that's going yeah. here. And when is the next book due out? Do you know? No, uh, like I said, we're just writing it now, and we're doing a lot of you know starting a book tour, um, doing some book signings next week, as a matter of fact, and just continuing to get the word out with some of the indie publishing uh, and some of the indie bookstores as well. So I want to continue to move it. I'm looking sometime in 2012. Not yet sure. Uh, at this time, I'm also working with uh, someone to get it into a screenplay form. 
so we can start to pitch wow. it because I really think the story is something that can be uh, it really needs to be visualized as well as read. So uh, probably looking for the book around the first quarter of next year, possibly. Um, so we're just really excited. I'm going to also be writing another story uh, simultaneously with that. That's a whole nother uh, chapter um, uh, about three men, basically, who are uh, demon slayers. So it's going to be interesting. Ooh, yeah, that does sound interesting. Yeah. OK, yeah. tell us a little bit about yourself, Braxton. Uh, that's okay. a very interesting name. Where did that come from? You know. Uh, it's interesting. My 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 mom and dad tell me that um, when my mom was in labor. Uh, my dad was out looking at you know in the lobby, kind of waiting uh, until the final moments. And uh, he saw on TV it was a football game going on, and they said that the guy's last name was Braxton, and uh, who was playing on the team. I think he was a defensive back, but he just kept saying his name, Braxton, in on the tackle, Braxton, in on the play. He just kept hearing over and over. He said, "Well, you know, it actually sounds pretty good." So uh, they they went with Braxton, and uh, you know that's where it came from. Um, I think the origin is uh, English, and it means like Brookstone, like you know, um, right. something else, something of that nature, like building on stone kind of thing. So, um, I'm originally uh, from California, born in California, uh, moved to uh, Miami. My, that's where my mom was from. My mom and dad got divorced when I was really young. Moved back to Miami. Pretty much lived with uh, my mom, my grandmother, and my brother, who's older than me. And then I, I grew up in Miami. Uh, went to University of Miami as well, ran track and field there for about uh, four years and uh, completed my uh, my bachelor's in health science, went on to get my master's in physical therapy and then followed up with my doctorate in physical therapy a little bit later. Uh, got married uh, while I was in grad school and I have two beautiful children, uh, two girls. And, you know, we just we decided to move in, uh, up to Atlanta in 2004. I just felt like it was a call and like something greater was going to happen, but God was kind of telling me it wasn't going to happen in Miami. I felt, he said the soil was kind of used up. I needed to get on fresh soil. So we kind of went with that. We prayed on it and, and we got a lot of revelation about it and just things just really seemed to click and we just couldn't be happier. We haven't looked back. Well, good for you. I, it seems to me like you're, you're real good about checking with God about where you want to go. And you know what? That is a rare quality in people. So good for you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Now you have a, fa a famous family connection. Yeah, uh, Bill Cosby's my uncle. He's my dad's brother, and um, actually, my uncle Russell lives here in Atlanta too. So we connect a lot. He's a uh, he's a Los Angeles, he's an Oakland Raiders fan, and so am I. So we always talk about the games every week. But um, yeah, my uncle was a great inspiration to me. He actually uh, scholarship me through college. You know, uh, University of Miami is a private school. Of course, you'd hate to have to shell out all that yeah. money for education, but you know, <laughs> yeah. definitely was worth it. And he. He helped support me through that. He's been a constant uh, voice of support, especially just kind of watching some of the accolades and things he's collected over time and the uh, inspiration he's been to so many people and the voice that he's been um, over time. You know, just always keeping everything very professional and uh, staying with his own practice. You know, I mean, when comedians came out, uh, you know, everybody had their style, but people were kind of going with, the, you know, a lot of the um, – the cursing and the obscene kind of comedy and he stayed with his own thing and even though that wasn't really trendy he stayed with it he stayed focused with it and you know it really did him well in the end and he's always maintained that focus so same way with my writing I, I think I have a different type of style and I want to stay uh, determined to keep that going as well so uh, inspiration on so many levels that he's been and I'm just real um, grateful for everything he's done for me. Was he happy that you ran track and field in college? Oh, yeah. Big fan of track and field. You know, <laughs> some of his albums you hear, like the one about the high jump and all of that. And, and, you know, so he did He did track and field. He actually ran in Philadelphia. And every year we would go to the Pennsylvania Relays, uh, University of Miami, and, and compete up there. And he would be there and see me run. And, you know, it was great always going up there knowing I'd see him. And, and it, it would be like a, a big hoopla about us being there and competing. And we actually ended up winning. Uh, one of the relays that we ran. So that was a great day, too. Well, that sounds awesome. Braxton, what advice do you have for people who have yet to be published? <sighs> Stay with it. I mean, you know, you can read so many stories. I mean, there's so many people out there who, you know, of course, you always have the outliers who have instant success. They kind of get discovered. The book goes big and it's like, wow, you know what happened. But there's a lot of great stories out there. You know, I'm, I'm constantly looking, you know, I, I've gone on your website, you know, saw that you had the three books that you had published as well. and um, I think it's just something that, you know, if you really feel as if this is what you want to do, I know I've just had confirmation over and over again that God has called me to be an author. So that's why the other ideas have just kind of poured out. I've got f saved files on my computer like, OK, I got to start that book someday, but it's got to get through these now. 
Um, I, I think it's just something that, you know, creating, creating something is great because it's yours, you know, and you just got to really be dedicated and focused to the idea first. Be happy that you um, are at least creating it. Uh, once you get it moving, then you just nurture it and you help it to grow and really have expectation that, hey, if it doesn't make it big, you know, do you really feel as if this was something that you were called to do? And I know that's what I have. And, and the people who have read it have really liked it. I've been pleased with that. Uh, we're just continuing to market it. But I think uh, social networking is up because I, I met you through Twitter. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. We great, did. A great connection. <laughs> yes. And um, I think that, you know, you just have to really like it. You know, everything I've seen from some of the independent authors, even some of those who are not like, you know, published with uh, uh, publishers, but they kind of just do self-publishing. They, they just love their craft. And, and, and you go to their websites and you read up on it and you see everything that they talk about their books. They really feel good about what they've put together. And nobody can take it away from you once you write it, you know, and it's your own world to kind of play in and change the storylines and everything. So there's just such a, a, a resolving, uh, resounding kind of uh, satisfaction of creating something and putting it into play. You know, there really is. Now, do you still have a full physical therapy practice? Yeah, I, I work for a, a, com a rehab company and I con my private practice, I actually contract myself out to do home health. So I work in a rehab facility for the bigger company. And then afterwards, I do a couple of patients on the side. Just kind of, I love going to people's homes and work with them in their environment and really just kind of touching them and, and, and getting to just know people. You know, there's so many just great things you can learn from people and your experiences. And heck, some of them I even try to put in, incorporate into my books because there's so many stories out there to, to be told, you know, so, uh, all this rich, uh, detail and, 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 um, storytelling can't just come from your head you know you got to get it from being out in the world too so i really love doing that so you are a husband yes a father of two adorable girls yes. and a full physical therapy practice yes. when do you find time to write <laughs> that's what everybody asked me uh, my wife was was nice enough to uh help me partition out some time and what i do is um i come home and uh you know go through family time, you know, getting the girls ready for school uh, the next day and, and cleaning up and, and eating and spending time with the family and spending time with my wife. So what I did is I kind of hollowed out a, a window of time. I wrote between 10 p.m. to 1 o'clock in the morning. Those were my times. And then sometimes I just took off like a couple of days. Uh, that's another thing I tell people, but not inspired to write, do not write, because you'll feel like you're just forcing stuff on paper just to fill up space. And you don't want to ever be like that because some days, man, I go in there and knock out like, three chapters and you know another day i just knock out maybe five pages i'm like all right that's it i'm not really feeling it tonight i'm gonna wait um and you know other times i might be out and not even be around a computer and i just get a great idea oh man you need to put that in the book um i feel god kind of telling me you know you need to put this in it's gonna be great and i go ahead and i got it down somewhere on a sheet of paper and come back to it so that's my time window and um uh that's what i that's what i basically did um during my writing so I didn't have to take away from my job or from my family. Well, that's good. And, you know, that that is really how it works um, as a writer. Mm -hmm. Life, you live a full life. Yeah. You know, you have jobs, you have responsibilities, you have familial responsibilities, and you have to just carve out the time. Now, what advice do you have to people who have never written a word before but always feel like they've had a book inside them? Because you, you went through all that education, got your practice yeah. up. And then we're sitting in church and bam, there was your book. Right. So how about people who have a book inside them and haven't written that first word yet? I tell you, it was a challenge because, you know, you go through college and they're like, okay, write this paper, a thousand words. And another one, you got to write this 15,000 words. And it always seemed very daunting because they put a, a, a limit on you. Like, you know, you have to hit this many words. And then I had case reports I did for college and my, and my uh, graduate degree and my thesis. And you're sitting there like, okay. Okay, this this section of the thesis is three thousand words. So you always felt like you had some kind of a goal that you had to hit. Uh, and then writing a book, when you sit down, you're like, man, you know, uh, I think you just kind of sit down and you say, hey, you, you write an outline and you say, in this chapter, it's gonna we're gonna talk about this, and you just start to let it flow and you just let it come out on paper. And I tell you, even when I went back through the book, you know, re reading it over and over again, I'm like, man, where did this come from? Well, I guess I was the only one in the room because uh, I had to write it then, you know, put anybody else who put it in. But uh, you just get inspired and you just let it flow. And then you look at your word count and you're like, man, that's 30,000 words just like that, you know. And then before you're getting close to 100,000, I would have never imagined I can write that many words uh, and, and tell a story, you know. So people who are actually, um, they have an idea in their head, they have a story they want to tell, just 
slowly chip away at it, write little outlines, write little blurbs, um, put together an, a, a, a full outline so you can structure it and figure out how you want the flow of the book to go. Because I moved chapters around a lot when I was writing and putting it together just to make sure that the flow of the book and the pacing was good. Um, and I think that that's just what people have to do. You know, don't look at the overall, hey, you might write a book that's only 100 pages. That might just be your first one. You know, you might come back the next time and write something that's even bigger. But if you've got a story to tell, just write it, you know, and get it on, get it in the computer. You can always go back and edit. Don't be afraid to edit. And then once you get it to somebody and you get it to an editor, don't be afraid to let them edit it either. It was many times I was sitting there looking at that delete button like, these are my words. <laughs> you know, I don't want to take these out. You know, I like this part, but. Pretty much for like 95% of it, I took uh, the editor's um, suggestions and, and I really feel like, you know, it came out and, and I would sit at the computer and pray before I, I actually went into edit and say, Lord, you know, let me know what I need to take out. So I'm not sitting here being prideful and afraid to take it out. If it needs to go, it needs to go. So uh, I feel like I was really willing to let that happen. You know what? I had to do the same thing because <laughs> when the edits came back, I, I called my little sister actually and I said, uh, could you tell me if I it's all ego or am I right uh, uh, here? <laughs> yep, yep. So been there, done that. Okay, you said you've got some book signings coming up. Where? Yeah, and um, what what are the dates and times so we can just share? Okay, well there's two local ones here in uh, Georgia. One is going to be in Canton, Georgia, and that's going to be at Hall's uh, Book Bookstore. That one's going to be on the 22nd of October, and then the other one is going to be in uh, Gainesville, Georgia. Actually, Gainesville is Hall, and that's going to be um, on a, on Friday the 21st, and that's going to be at 6 o'clock p.m. on October 21st, and then the next one's going to be in Canton, Georgia, and that's at Yawn's Bookstore, and that's going to be at 11 o'clock a.m., so Friday and Saturday. I'm currently working on a few more, trying to get into libraries as well. Um, got something outlined in November, so uh, if they want, they can always go to the website to be informed on everything that's happening with Protostar and myself. They can go to www.braxtonacosbygodson.com. And I, I kind of try to keep that website updated as much as possible with the book signings and anything that's happening with editorial stuff as well. Well, good. Okay, and do you have any speaking engagements coming up? Um, often it really helps to sell books if you're doing speaking engagements as well. Again, we're, we're doing that right now. I've got a publicist who's making phone calls and kind of setting all that up. Um, we, I've done already a couple of book signings, actually, uh, local Georgia also at my church as well, are a big support and I'm just kind of networking and just, just getting it out there. I've done some chats where we've done some sessions with, uh, other authors and we've, we've had a few discussions. So I really love doing that, getting the forum opportunity to speak to people and inspire them. Really, that's, I mean, at the end of the day, I'd love to inspire somebody to just follow right behind me and do the same thing. You know, if God's given you a vision, uh, you just, you want to get that vision out there. Um, and then, of course, the revelation behind what it all means, you know, what is Starcrossed uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I've just been overwhelmed with that. So speaking of engagements, uh, book tours, signings, all of that is just going to continue to be updated on the website. So we're just letting it move on its own. And it's just kind of getting a uh, kind of generating the buzz right now. Is there, okay, what else do you want to talk about? We've covered just about everything I can think of. Is right. there anything that you feel like my listeners and viewers need to know? Well, um, I, I feel as uh, if I was to kind of try to channel the book, I would probably say if, if, you, if you're in love and you like love, pick up the book. Um, <laughs> if, you like, uh, if you like action, it's got a good amount of action in it as well. Um, I tell people, you know, well, I'm not a sci-fi person. I say, well, you know, God kind of spoke to me one day and said, hey, you know, I was, I'm the ultimate physicist, Braxton. You know, everybody, <laughs> everybody who's alive and breathing, breathing and living, and I mean, you look at the stars, you look at the moon. I mean, from the smallest little atom to the to the biggest star in the galaxy. I mean, God is a physicist. So even though you might not think you like science fiction, you are part of a science fiction experiment. You are a miracle, <laughs> walking and living and breathing. You know, so uh, even if you don't feel like you might get it into it. I really think it's a book that kind of covers a, a gamut of things. And I think there's something in the book for everybody to read. Um, like I said, there's side characters, there's science, there's uh, love stories, there's action, there's conspiracy. So it's kind of a, a, a big hodgepodge of a lot of things that God just kind of spoke to me as I was writing it. So I think that if you can just pick it up and just start it, and you got, you know, you do have to kind of go to there because it is fiction. Um, but I think there's a little bit of fiction in all of us who like to just see something that's fresh and new. 
I think it's a great book for you to pick up. And, and there definitely will be more, and it's going to just get bigger and bigger as we keep it moving. What's your favorite part of the book without giving away the plot? I really like I told somebody today who actually read it, and they loved it. I, I said, you know, my three favorite chapters are uh, Chapter 8, which is called Work Hardening. And that's really where uh, William's starting to get this this kind of this emptiness in his stomach, like, man, this is really starting to pull on me now. I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, he's feeling that decision coming. Um, and uh, 15 is, is where it, it, he's really at the um, the peak uh, uh, and his wits end about really making this decision. So he has this, this torment that's inside of him. And I really like that that um, chapter as well. And then chapter 20 is uh, a big action scene that takes place with him and some of the antagonists of the uh, first story as well. Well, so those three are my biggest ones, my favorites. But um, everybody seems to have a little something that they always come at me and say, what about this? And I go, man, okay, I forgot I was in there. Yeah, when I wrote that, and I try to give people a description. When, I, when people read the book, I, I really do like to reach out to them and, and email back and forth, even have um, opportunities for blogging on the website just to kind of say, hey, you know, what did you expect? What are some of the things you might see happening in the second one? Because I like to give the readers what they want to see. I have an outline already, but. If I can incorporate anything else that readers really want to be touched upon in the sequels, man, I'm all for it. So um, I always just ask people, what did you like about this and that? And then I ask them what their take is. And everybody's had a little something different to say. So it's great to hear how they got their interpretation of where the story was. Braxton, thank you so much for joining me today on Turning the Tide. It's been wonderful visiting with you. Good luck with your book, with the sales. with uh, And tell us again the name of your book and your website one more time so that people yeah. can, can find the information. No problem. And thank you again so much, Candace. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak on it. Uh, it's the Starcross Saga. Uh, the first book in the series is called Proto Star, which is the birth of a star by the way, and you can read up uh, more about me and my book on www.braxtonacosbygodson.com. The book is available. It's a book. It's a print-on-demand book right now. We're really praying and fighting to get it into uh, some of the bookstores like Barnes & Noble and Books A Million, uh, but you can catch it anywhere on the web. If you just Google it, it's going to be on Amazon. It's going to be on Barnes & Noble's website, Books A Million. Oh, book depository. Uh, you can get it in ebook and paperback form right now. Uh, if you have Kindle Auto e-readers, it's available on there, and uh, the paperback is out as well, so you can pick that up. And if you get them from my website, if you pick up the paperback from my website, I do mail you out a signed copy, um, and uh, you can just pick up a regular one as well on Amazon or, or anybody else. Wonderful. Okay, Braxton, thank you, and you can get back to your busy schedule, and we will uh, put this up on the website. And I will send you a link of the interview, okay? Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You all have a great weekend. Thanks, Braxton. You have a great one, too.